In today's tutorial, we're learning five infographics that you could make using this paper airplane style. And it's a modern but memorable way of showing a more serious topic in your slides. If you want to follow along in the tutorial, this is the color palette that I've used. You can pause the video and add it to your slides. And if you want to save time while making presentations, you can have a look at my Patreon page where you can find multiple business slides decks for your company or project. And we're starting off this tutorial by creating the paper airplane. And for the first one, we're starting from a blank slide. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color palette. So I'm going to change it to the blue, the bright blue color palette of which you have the color codes. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to go to format background and change it to a gradient fill. And here I'm choosing for the second darkest radial gradient fill. So that it's a little bit lighter on the inside and it gradually gets darker towards the outside. Now let's look into creating the paper plane. And for that, we're going to use simple shapes and I'm starting with a triangle. So I'm going to drag a triangle on the slide and place it somewhere in the middle. I'm going to remove the outline because I don't need it. And now I'm going to duplicate the icon. So control shift and drag to create a copy. And let's make it just another color. So dark yellow, so we can see the difference. And we're going to place it at the bottom of the triangle. So connect them to the sides and then drag it to the bottom. So you get like this cursor shape in the light blue. And this is just a detail. Of course, you can create the airplane as you want. Next, we're going to add a rectangle to the side. So drag a square and we're going to rotate it slightly. Let's say 15 degrees and place it also at the bottom. Hold control shift and then drag it so it's 15 degrees to the other side and place it in the middle. Oh, that's not far enough. This way you can see that it's perfectly aligned in the middle with the grid system. Now, the last thing is we want to create one more copy of that triangle, make it a lot smaller and place it all the way in the center of the slide. I'm going to make this red to make it stand out, center it in the middle, make it just a bit smaller, just over halfway and then smaller here as well. Something about this size. Now on first glance, this might be a bit odd, but what we're now going to do is we're going to subtract the shapes. Always subtract the shape first, the largest shape, and then hold shift and select one of the other shapes. In this case, the bottom triangle, go to merge and subtract. And this subtracts the second shape from the first one. We're going to repeat the process for all of the angles, subtract, subtract here as well, and now subtract the bottom part. And this gives us quite a cool looking paper airplane effect. Now, if you want to go the extra mile, there's a one thing you can do, and that is inserting one more rectangle that covers half of the airplane. Hold the airplane, shift and the rectangle and subtract once more. So you have one half of the airplane. Create a copy, rotate, flip horizontally and then merge them together. The reason we do this is because we can go to format the shape and give this just a slight tint darker. So let's say we keep this side blue and the other one we make perfectly white. This kind of gives a shadow effect on the shape. Let's group them together and now they can act as one airplane in the slide. Final touch is I'm going to give it a drop shadow, so a shadow and then drop shadow to the right. I'm going to increase the distance by just a little bit, the blur, so it's a bit more subtle and maybe add transparency to about 70%. So this way we have created our airplane. Now let's look at some variations that we can make of the slide. Let's start with the first one, which is looking at a new strategy. And for this slide, we have chosen three airplanes that fly straight ahead while one is taking a sharp turn and directing towards the new strategy. And for the first one, we're going to make an example where you diverge from the norm. So we're going to create three copies and place them on the left, maybe on just below each other. You can select them all three, align, distribute vertically to make sure that the spacing in between them is even, and then do the same for the horizontal distribution so that they're also evenly spaced on the horizontal axis. Throw backwards a little bit, so hold control and scroll back or forward to zoom in or out, or you can use this toggle at the bottom. I'm going to insert shapes and align, and I'm going to drag a line on the slide. Right click line, format shape, 0. Point, or 
width seems about right. And I'm going to use the dash type, the fourth one, just the regular dashes. I'm going to make it a white and then place it below the graphic that we've created. Hold Ctrl V to create a copy. And I'm connecting this to the bottom of the slide. Hold Ctrl key again and do that for the third one as well. As you can see, I'm not entirely connecting it to the airplane. I'm leaving just a little gap between the airplane and the dashed line. I think that visually looks just a bit nicer and cleaner on the slide. Now this gives us three airplanes that are flying straight ahead. Now if we want to make a fourth one, let's create this one. We turn it 90 degrees and let's make this one stand out just a little bit more. So I'm going to use a different color. Let's make it yellow on one side and then a darker yellow on the other side. That I think is just a bit too orange. So I'm going to look for something in between. I'm going to slide it over just a bit more to the yellow side. And I think that's more subtle. Let's place these just a bit to the left and maybe also closer together. I think they were just a bit too far apart. This looks good. And then the yellow one, create a copy of the dash for a fourth one, increase the height. And now we want to make a curved line. And for that, I'm going to go to shapes and choose the arc shape. Hold shift to create a perfect circle or like a quadrant of a circle and rotate it to the left 90 degrees. Place it on top and now we can hold Control shift c and Control shift v to paste the formatting. And this is quite an easy way to create a variant of one of your airplanes and one that diverges. Now if you want to emphasize it, we can also add some text to the slide. So go to the text box, drag it on the right side. Let's type in new, for example, a new strategy that we want to go for, make it white, font of near next, and we're going to make it bold. Increase the font size to, let's try 120. I think 125 will be good. Place it here in the middle. Maybe 120 was good enough. I'm going to give it a drop shadow so that there's just this little lift between the text and the slide. And that is kind of similar to the airplanes that we've created. So it's consistent. Let's create a copy of that text box. Reduce the size to 50. Let's type in strategy. And we're going to change the font to sign painter. I really like this combination. Give it the same orange or yellow touch to the slide. I'm going to use the yellow one in this case and then increase the size until it nicely fits below the text. Go to the drop shadow of the text and make sure it goes to the top so that the shadow goes to the top of the slide. Increase the distance, increase the blur and maybe, tra maybe the transparency as well so that it jumps out from the word new. And let's preview what we have. And this looks like quite a clean slide already to show a new strategy in a creative way. That brings us to the second example, and that is a leadership infographic. And for this one, we have chosen a pyramid style where we have a one airplane, a yellow one, leading the pack and paper airplanes in white following. And for the second one, we're going to duplicate the slide. I'm going to remove some of the content, so the lines we don't need. The text we can keep as it is for now. And I'm going to place the airplanes at the bottom, space them evenly, align, distribute horizontally, and maybe a fourth one. There we go. Put this one to the side. Let's arrange them one more time. Distribute horizontally, place them at the bottom. And now I'm going to select three, hold control to create copies. And I'm going to build a small pyramid. So it's two more. And then I'm going to place the yellow one at the top. Select them all. You can right click group or use the shortcut Control G. Then you can scale them up or down depending on where you want to position on the slide. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to select the text, shift it just a bit more to the left so that it's equally spaced. And let's also change the wording to, for example, lead and the subtitle by example. This doesn't need to be capitalized and maybe the font can be one tick smaller and then place it in the center of your slide. And let's see what that looks like on full screen. And this second slide is pretty cool to show leadership or leading by example in a creative way. 
And that brings us to the third one, which is the focus slide, where one airplane is focused while the other ones are kind of scattered about. And also for the third one, I'm going to start with a duplicate. I don't need the bottom ones. I need to ungroup first. I don't need the bottom ones. And the text can go for now as well. And let's randomly position some of the paper planes on the slide so they can go to all different angles, create some copies so they're floating floating about on the slide. Let's turn them towards each other, some of them like this. And then we do the same on the right side. So let's turn a few 180 degrees, some flying off the slide again. And then the yellow one we put in the center of the slide like this. And now we're going to copy some elements. First, I'm going to copy this dashed line, the straight one, and position it underneath the yellow one so that this one is already flying straight ahead. Now for the other ones, they're kind of going about without much structure, and we want to visualize that with a dashed line as well. There's two things you can do. You could use this arc or this curved line, and for that you click, and every time you click, you generate a angle in your path. So you can create multiple clicks and make it float to the end of the slide. Once you're done, you just press escape and that will give you a line. To apply the same formatting, same thing here, Ctrl Shift C, Ctrl Shift V to place the formatting. So that's quite a nice clean way to create some cool curves on the slide. You could also use this scribble effect and for that one you can just draw and put it to the side and just Ctrl Shift C, uh, Ctrl Shift V again to create that copy formatting. This curved line will be a little bit smoother while the scribble line might be a little bit more hand-drawn feeling. So depending on the style you want to go for, you could use either one of these two. You don't always have to do the loop. You can just go to the side. You can go over the lines. That doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to continue that a few more times to create some scribbles and maybe one more line like this. And the last one can just flow out right here. Now to top things off, I'm going to copy the text from the first slide. I'm going to paste it on the slide, center it in the middle, format shape, and I'm going to remove the shadow for this one. Let's increase the size of the box and also for the text. Let's put it 144 and let's type in focus. Maybe one tick larger. That was quite good. And we're going to send it to the back. Send backwards. Go to format shape again and the text we're going to put some transparency on it oh this hasn't gone to back let's send it all the way backwards and maybe the font for this one it could be the heavy flip font that will look not too bad transparency can go up even higher somewhere between 85 or even 90 will do and let's preview what we have on full slide and this is a pretty nice visual that you could use to show focus in a more creative and innovative way on the slide using this same paper airplane effect. That brings us to the next one where we show our uniqueness. And in this infographic, we want to show multiple paper planes where one paper plane diverges from a whole pack and points towards creativity. Now for the fourth one, we're going to duplicate this slide again, drag it to number four, and let's put some things aside. First of all, let's ungroup what we have. And we just need three of those in a row. I'm going to hold control shift and create a copy. Put this one to the side and copy that two, three more times. Maybe once more so they can kind of go off the slide. That looks not too bad. I'm going to position them just a little bit lower because I'm using going to use this third one and shift that one out. Select the yellow one and I'm going to place it right about here. Maybe not entirely 90 degrees, almost give it a slight curve. I'm going to copy this angle here. And it's a bit of a variation on the first one that we've made, but it could be used in a different way where the first one, for example, use, focuses more on the strategy, changing the strategy where there's clearly defined lines and you diverge with a new strategy. This one could, for example, be used where you want to emphasize that your uniqueness, staying creative or diverging from the masses. So the text, I'm going to change it for the sake of this example to stay creative and then align the airplane with the curve. Let's increase this size a bit and position it like that. That doesn't look too bad. 
So this one is a very easy variant that you can make, but it emphasizes your uniqueness and diverging from the crowd. So I wanted to highlight that one as well. And that brings us to the last one, which is a thank you slide. And this one, of course, also could be used as a product launch, but we show a cloud that we've made in PowerPoint with an airplane and a nice keyword on the side. And for the last one, we're also going to create a duplicate so we don't have to recreate too much. Remove all the white ones, the dashed line, and put the text to the side for a moment. The same with the arrow. What we're going to do is we're going to create a freeform shape. So we have this freeform shape in the line section, and I'm going to create a shape where I have a pointed angle and then I kind of go to the bottom again and drag it somewhere to the beginning. So it's like a bit like a wave, a very sharp pointy wave. I'm going to make it white and no outline, just a bit smaller. Go to the shapes again and drag a circle on the screen. Make it white, no outline and position it on the border of the shape. Hold control key and drag to create some copies and you can spread them all over the edges. You can vary them with smaller variants, so you can differ in between the size. So we are creating this cloud effect with the shapes and sizes of the circle. So I'm going to make one smaller. So we have different sizes of clouds that we are using in this design. Maybe a few popping out. That always looks nice. Now I'm going to select them all, go to shape format and go to union. And this way we have created a quite unique cloud shape in PowerPoint. Right click shape format and I'm going to give this shape a drop shadow to the top right. That way we stay consistent, maybe increase the distance, blur size just a little bit, adjust the transparency and then let's place our airplane in front of that cloud, make it a bit smaller. And this could be a pretty cool way to indicate that you're launching a product, for example, or something else like a thank you slide that could also be done. So if you say thank you, let's make that just a bit smaller, go to home, and in the yellow we can replace with you. Let's keep it all smaller caps for consistency, increase it in size, and position it on top of each other. So this way you have quite a cool thank you slide that you could use. You can group them together and increase or decrease the size. It really depends on, on the style that you want to create in your presentation. I'm going to go for this one so that everything is nicely balanced on the slide. And now let's preview what we have created. So in today's tutorial, we have seen a creative slide for a new strategy using this paper airplane effect. We've also seen a pyramid style where you can show the leading or leading by example in a creative way, as well as a focus slide where all the airplanes are kind of scattered around and one airplane is focused. The next one shows the creativity or your uniqueness where you diverge from the masses. And then eventually we have this launch slide or a thank you slide that you could use in your presentations. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to learn more about PowerPoint, please watch the video on the screen right now.